Welcome to the third and final talk in the Logic Lab series. In the previous two lectures we covered the history of the Logic Lab and how to encode logics in it. In this lecture we will cover the General Proof Assistant. The General Proof Assistant, or GPA, is a program designed to work with derivation rules as introduced in the previous talks. It has its origins in earlier systems specifically in the Proved It Proof Assistant which was taught at Stony Brook University and used to drive the proofs in the second edition of Logic Proof and Computation. Proved It was specifically designed to work only with first order logic and no other logic. Proved It was written nearly 20 years ago in 2003 at the time of writing and has since been superseded by the GPA in the forthcoming third edition of Logic Proof and Computation. The leaner design of the GPA was also influenced by the sparsely elegant Hilbert Proof Assistant in the Book of Shen, 4th edition, which conducted Hilbert-style proofs for a version of propositional calculus. The lessons learnt there enabled the GPA to be coded in less than 250 lines of Shen. The GPA will accept sequence that correspond to the syntax created by the user that is, it expects props to be entered, and the proof is progressed by entering valid operations to the command line. Every valid operation advances a step in a GPA proof. The GPA is a polyadic function, courtesy of a macro, that accepts zero arguments or one argument. The type of GPA is string goes to boolean, and a value true is returned if a proof is completed successfully. If GPA is invoked without arguments, then this is equivalent to treating the call to GPA with the empty string as an argument. And the string argument to GPA, if non-empty, should contain a path to a file containing a saved proof attempt. In this case, GPA will read the file to recover the proof attempt and place the user exactly at the point where the proof attempt was saved. Here is a proof of modus ponens in the GPA using the system LPC that we introduced in the previous talks. Here the program is waiting for you to enter the assumptions. To do so we type P and hit enter and then P implies Q and hit enter. And then finally, the circumflex signs off the process of entering the assumptions. Uh, circumflex is the Shen break character. It causes Shen to abort whatever it is doing. And here we use it to end the entry of the assumptions. We then enter the conclusion Q. Now, if we entered circumflex to the interrogation prompt, we would in fact abort the proof altogether. So the program has now received the problem and the GPA responds by printing out the initial sequence. The greater than prompt indicates that the program is expecting to receive a proof command. The number in square brackets indicates the number of sequence we have to solve. The first rule to apply is implies left so we type function implies left and hit the enter key. Now the FN sign is necessary to show that we intend to invoke a function. And we conclude with a proof by hypothesis. The GPA now asks to what file you would wish to save this proof. Entering the circumflex abort will cause the GPA to exit with true and you won't save anything. If we enter a string giving a path name then the proof will be saved to the disk. Let's enter a file name. True is again returned but looking at the current directory we find we have a file mp.prf and a file mp.vprf or virtual proof. The former file is for human use and reflects the proof as it was conducted on the computer. The mp.vprf file 
is for the computer use and it enables the GPA to restore a proof attempt from the point where we left off. If at any stage we wish to abandon a proof, we type the circumflex to the prompt and you will ask if we wish to abort the proof. The GPA keeps a rolling record of the proof in two files in the home directory, temp.prf and temp.vprf. Having abandoned the proof, we can re-enter it again by typing GPA applied to the string temp.vprf. And last, the command back enables a proof to be rolled back. So typing any natural number n will roll the proof back n steps. Obviously if n equals 0 then no steps are rolled back and if n is equal to or greater than the length of the proof then the proof is rolled back to its start. Here is an example which uses parameterized derivation rules. It requires the law of the excluded middle. So here we actually pose the rule concerning the law of the excluded middle to introduce p or not p. Now because the function lem has the type prop goes to valid goes to valid, then lem p is a partial application and it has the type valid goes to valid. So it's a tactic and we can invoke it to advance the proof. Now a theorem in the GPA is a conclusion of a proof that proceeds from an empty list of assumptions. Now it's important that our storage of theorems be self-validating. That is, the way we store them must be such that they are validated as theorems every time they are proved or used. If self-validation is dropped, we are forced to rely on faith whenever we are past a proposition that a third party claims is a theorem. Once we have self-validation, we can use theorem introduction. Now, theorem introduction is based on the simple idea that if we've proved something, we should not have to prove it again. This command will attempt to invoke a proved theorem by reference to the file named by the string. The file named in the string should be a virtual proof file. And the initial checks done by the computer are as following. First, it checks to see that the virtual proof file exists. Second, it reads the first element P as a conclusion, which was proved, and it checks if it's a prop. Third, it checks the list of assumptions used and ensures that they are in fact empty. And fourth, it reads the list of inference rules that we use to actually prove the theorem and it makes sure that they are valid inference rules. Now if any of those steps fail, then theorem introduction fails. But suppose they succeed, then the next steps are executed. Fifth, P is posed as a lemma. All existing assumptions are thinned away. And the elements are the inference rules, that is, which were used to prove the theorem are applied. And if these inference rules really secure a proof of P, then P will be proved and added to the list of existing assumptions. If 
theorem introduction fails because P is not proved, then the proof will not be changed. So from the user point of view, the effect of a successful invocation for theorem introduction is that the past theorem will appear as an extra assumption in the proof. Now, as I've said before, a tactic is a, any function of type valid to valid. Um, any pr unparameterized derivation rule is a tactic, and any parameterized derivation rule becomes a tactic when all the parameters, uh, apart from obviously the actual sequence itself, are submitted to it. However, though derivation rules are tactics, not all tactics are derivation rules. And we considered an example in the previous lecture, a function called indirect proof, that can be used as a tactic. Well, let's celebrate our understanding of the GPA by using this tactic in action. Well, that concludes our presentation of the Logic Lab. Now, there's a monograph programming the Logic Lab out in the summer of 2023, which details applications, including first-order logic and constructive type theory. But I do hope you've enjoyed this presentation of the technology, which in fact predated the spy skills and was developed at the time of chunky monitors and three or quarter inch discs. Um, I'm very pleased to be able to bring it back to life and present it for your use. Uh, do subscribe to our channel and donate if you want to support our work. See you again.